welcome back to another Super Veg video with me, Jetty. You were joining me for the round 23 review. And in this old video tab, we're going to go through, obviously, my team and the performance. We're not going to touch a ton on that because no one's got trades to make. And it's, uh, what, one week to go. But I'm going to quickly go through uh, a couple of videos I had from the preseason. I like doing this every year, which is just like reviewing where my good calls and bad calls were. Um, so I'm going to bring up two videos one was uh the players that i'd faded and then this ones were the ones that i'd locked in and just see how good they were as kind of templates or advice uh, in the season and, and to look at where we got things wrong because inevitably you do um and then what else to address so two other things uh, to talk about so one i went to the bombers game this week their only game in new south wales for year bloody awful um would not recommend that was terrible we uh we left early um and then uh, the goal line decisions are like Crom's fan, you should feel robbed because your finals chances have been taken away from something that could have been easily avoided if the AFL was, had their wits about them, but they don't. So uh, yeah, very unlucky. You guys, you guys should be playing West Coast what for your spot in your eight this week. All right, so quickly on the super coach stuff, I scored a 25-1-6, which moved me down 30 or so spots to 312. And really, that's not a bad result given that uh, what Libba was out and we had Fletcher covering who was just able to manage the 30. So very much hoping that Libba is back this week. Um, had a, a couple of other poor scores, probably in Doherty is probably the, the poorest unique score um, that we had on top of that. Apologies. And now not having Sheasel hurt again this week, I feel like I've been saying that a lot, but it is definitely true. Uh, and then otherwise, I think things went pretty well. I got the vice captaincy in Marshall Wright, um, ended up picking on him. If I missed on that, I would have gone English captain over Bon and Pelly for sure. So anyone that got Bont captain, well done to you. Uh, he had a phenomenal kind of third and fourth to get that going. But yeah, I, I would have missed it for sure. But yeah, really this like Libra thing was the only thing that really hurt this week. So one trade short at the end, or at least like, you know, better bench cover short at the end. If I had what Windhager, it would have been probably all right. Um, but yeah, everyone else kind of went well. Even even Daniel pulled his finger out and had an all right week. But yeah, could have easily been a 2600, which I think would have moved me up spots. So um, just having a quick look at the fixture and doing some vice captain captain before we move into the video reviews. Um, there is... Like, I think the most interesting matchups are unfortunately both the Saturday night ones. So you've got English against uh, Neil, I presume, unless uh, DeLong's Ruckman's back. And we just saw Marshall go big with a 140 on them. Uh, the Dogs are still playing for a spot in the eight. Barely, but they are. Um, so they need to win this game. Cats don't have a ton on the line, I don't think, unless they need to win. No, they don't. They're out of the final. So, yes, there's not a lot on the line for the Cats. So, um uh, Bont's playing for Brownlow still as well. So I could see both Bont and English being good vice captain or captain options. The only problem is that 55 minutes later, you've got the Adelaide game against West Coast where Laird, Dawson, Crouch, Tex, any of those could end up being good vice captain or captain options as well. But the reality is going vice captain on one of the dogs players, seeing how they go for basically the first half and then trying to swap over if you think it's going to fail. That doesn't always work. And this week with Bon and Pelly was a great example of that, where he wasn't performing that well to halftime. Even English wasn't as well, um, but then ended up on decent vice captain or captain scores. You know, you've got to take the whole full four quarters in. So I feel like you just have to pick one from these games and then um, get your captain elsewhere. The challenge in that may be where else do you get a captain from? Um, like you could maybe vice captain merit against uh, Collingwood. Collingwood are like decent for, for mids and, uh, like, yeah, I don't know, but Essendon don't have anything to play for now. Uh, this Hawks free matchup, I'd be staying away from Sarong for sure. Brayshaw, you could look at. I I don't think Finn takes him. I think it goes to Sarong. Um, North Gold Coast. Uh, yeah, I mean, even if LDU's back, I think he's going to get the Miller attention, and I probably wouldn't be looking at the vice captain or captain on any of the Gold Coast guys. Maybe if you've got Flanders, I don't mind Flanders as a sneaky VC option this week. Um, Brisbane, St Kilda, nothing I really love in there. And then on the Sunday, you've got um, like Butters against Richmond. I could see that being a, a relevant um, option. Sydney against Melbourne, I wouldn't be 
touch and Petrarca with his forward time as a captain. That's a like VC only territory. And then uh, on the Sunday uh, to close it out, you've got Carlton against GWS with GWS playing for their spot in the eight. Um, and no one that I really love there either. So what do we do with the vice captain captain? I think it could be like merit into English. That could make sense. I, I probably still prefer English over Bont here. I get these I get these two wrong every time. I wish I just had one, so I just straight captain one rather than picking the low one each week. But this is probably where I'll start and then I'll reevaluate uh from from this point. Okay, and then yeah, hopefully Liver's back. Otherwise, you know, it'll be covering with like Fletcher or something like that. After Fletcher scored 30, I was like, oh yes, yeah, so at least I get to play Buller, but then he was laid out. Very much a shame. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are going well. I'm a little bit disappointed I'm not going to finish top 100. So uh, hopefully maybe I can move up a little bit this week and still get top 300. But top 1,000, top 500, it's all fine. And I'm still, what, 33rd in fantasy. So I'm going to have a good finish there. All right. So um, the two videos then, um, let's start with the players that I faded. I picked an excellent screenshot here for this to end on. Um all right, so these were the popular players that I'm not starting. Uh, and these are basically players that had been out on all preseason and had no interest in starting or they hadn't been in any of my sides. And I kind of went through and justified what each of those. So let's have a look and see whether these were good calls or bad calls. So Sicily, um, it feels funny to say now, but this was a good call and one that I would stand by. He's, I want to say he's average over the first eight or nine rounds was something like it was sub 100 and he dropped 100k um and this is very much falls in the like don't start the top price player on each line um methodology uh so what yeah like there you go eight rounds in he was 98 average he dropped to 537 great buy at that point but he was not a player that uh, you should have started which is good um oliver and laird i guess you can take these at the same time and so they also fall into the don't start the top price players on your line. Uh, Laird dropped that 50 straight out of the gate and then he ended up dropping a lot in price and ended up being a good buy later on. So definitely was one that I, I'm happy I didn't start. And then Oliver, unfortunately, was very good for a very long period of time. He finally dropped like 50K, which is the bare minimum you wanted as a non-starter. Traded him and then he got injured. I think that's how it happened, right? Yeah, so round seven, he dropped down to 650K, 652K here. Uh, and then what he lasted two more weeks before he got injured. So starting him was definitely the right call over not starting him in hindsight. I think the process, like I'd still avoid starting these types of players in the future, but um, it was a win for starters over non-starters. Laird, I think it was better not to start. The problem with not starting these guys ended up being that the other mids that you did take that were value ended up being really bad. Like people like took like Steel or McRae. I think I had McRae. Uh, and they just ended up not being very good picks. So unfortunately, none of the value guys came through unless you jumped on a sarong, which is a very few people. Um, and then, yeah, most of the other ones didn't work. Uh, so Neil was a fade for like um, like really obvious reasons. You had Dunkley coming in to steal points. You had Ashcroft coming in to steal points, which is underrated. Uh, and he was you know quite highly priced after a very good year. And he did not live up to this at all. We got him very cheap. I don't know. When, how cheap did we get Neil? Uh, was somewhere around the buys. Maybe it was uh, after his buys, so after round 11. So 585K, he dropped you know nearly 100K at that point, uh, was averaging 110. So there you go. And he's averaged about 110 since then, to be honest. Um, so yeah, avoiding him was good. Ratio and Crips, I don't even really need to look at the stats to know that avoiding both of those were was a good move. Uh, avoiding wits was good. Uh, he got injured, had a laid out and then, uh, scored poorly anyway. And then, yeah, not starting Grundy. I know some people were flirting with it and I think this like popular players I faded, they had to be in at least 10% of sides. So, uh, maybe it was more casuals, but yeah, all of these rucks, rucks were good to avoid. I'm very glad I did in the forward line. I think Dusty's edge cause he's popular, but yeah, avoiding him was good. Horn Francis showed some good signs earlier that he could be a popular, like a good mid pricer, but that didn't work out. So glad I faded that. Sheasel is one that I had in this video, but actually took off and swapped to him just before round one. So the reason why I faded him without having gone back and watched the video, this is just off the top of my head, was I was very concerned that he was going to be like Rochelle Mark II, which is that he would be good, but the role is so bad that it's hard to score enough at that elevated price to be worthwhile. 
but we found out like 20 minutes before the first bounce of round one, it was confirmed that he was going to be behind the ball. So swapped to him in the side and moved him off this list. But yes, it I like I I understand why I had it in here at this point. I'm fine with the justification, but you wanted to have him round one um, based on what we found out later. Phil Poo, I um, I think also avoided for a similar reason, like him having to play forward in that Saints um, team. I was very worried about whether he could score enough of that elevated price. What did he end up getting to? He made 100K if you kind of timed it right, 110K if you held him really late. So yeah, not starting him, I think was the right call. And then King, uh, was did he end up being good? I have not checked uh, Ben King. No, okay, no, he he wasn't, okay. Oh, no, no, he, he, he did all right here. Um, so if you had him through the first nine weeks, he averaged 65 and made 100 and like 85K. So th this would have been perfectly fine. I think the issue is we had a, enough other good forward picks, especially with the premiums. And with this inconsistent scoring, it would have scared people off. Like, you know, you, are you holding him when he's done 23 and 31? ready for 104, 100, 49, 126. I mean, even after 49, people would have traded him and then you don't get the 126. So I think um, even though he would have been a good start, it would have been very hard to hold him to actually get the value out of him. So uh, yeah, I mean, you could call that one a wash, but I think overall, this is this is good. Um, like Oliver was probably a miss, but I'd back my process on that one. Sheasel was a miss, which I rectified, so I'm cool with that. And then King was maybe the only other one. All these other popular players that I faded, I'm all I'm all content with. So I'm I'm pleasantly surprised with that. That's like 14 players, and I'd say 12 or at least like definitely correct. Um, all right, and then here are the locked in. So um, I think like seven or eight of these, I want to say. Um, actually, maybe it was even as high as nine. I hadn't moved from my first preseason to the to this video and then the rest were uh, like really high conviction um so these are like if you're making a template these are the players i throw in and it looks like just having a quick scan that there are more misses on this one than the other one but let's go through it so firstly um yo well he got injured and i think this is a little bit like Sheasel as well he came out of all of our sides before round one um justification for this one would have been that if he is back and playing then the scoring is going to be right up there, you know, you, he, he's going to go 95, hundred. And I think when he came in and played and was fit, we saw that scoring potential back there for Yo, uh, which is why he trapped, you know, some more people later on. Um, uh, yeah. Like look, 125, 113, 93. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then like this back from injury, 98. Like, yeah. I think the scoring definitely was there for him. Um, but the, the knock on him was always the injury concern. He got injured pre- like b before round one, we all pulled him out. Um, so yeah, yep. He was locked in and then unlocked himself with an injury. And I think that was the only reason why I said multiple times, actually I was talking about George, like the only reason you take him out of, uh, out of your side is if he was to get injured and he got injured. So I had to take him out, but loved him as a pick. Uh, Gimby was one that I really liked just based on his profile, the potential for it to be a midfield role, um, the job security as well on that side. And he was a, a really good starting pick, I think. Um, only made about 130K to 160K, depending on how long you held him for, which is at the bottom end of the money you want to make. But he did provide some really good on-field scores. Early, you can see those first three rounds, he was averaging 88, which is huge. So nice scoring out of him. Pretty happy with that. Um, in the midfield, so we had Bont, who was my pick for M1 um, before the preseason. And I think that is definitely going to come true he's what 129 average i don't think there's anyone even close at this point both on total and on average um yeah i mean he's seven and a bit points clear of oliver and then almost 10 clear of uh Petrarca, who's third most um uh, and look injury and stuff for oliver obviously hurts that it was closer before that point but um oh that was the round one team so yeah so anyway i think um that, that was a good call. Green, I have a feeling, was a very good call as well. He was an underpriced or discounted primo. Um, he averaged well. Like, you know, he averaged... Uh, he started very well, but he averaged, what, 110 up until the buys at that point. And we started him at 530K. So he made 50K, averaged 110. He was priced cheap. Uh, it, 
I don't think you would have had to have them. It just comes back to there weren't a lot of other mids that did go particularly well. So uh, as a starting pick, I think he was a good choice. Hopper was another one of those tricky ones where we knew the scoring potential was there if you could kind of you know have his body hold up. And how did he actually perform before he got injured? He made... So he lasted to round nine where he dropped to 43 and got injured, but he'd made 120 K to that point and averaged 93. So for 330 K getting someone to average 90, make 110 K in nine rounds like that's or 120 something, depending on when you sold him. I think like that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm content with that. It's not like a lock, you know, there are lots of okay, like picks that you could, could provide the same, but it's, it's fine enough. Um, Ashcroft, I don't even need to look into this. He was, uh, what, the best rookie this year that wasn't Sheasel. So um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. I have to go back and think now. But yeah, like he was right up there. Phillips was an interesting one. If I remember this one correctly, he was, I should have, I should have checked this before the video started. I should have actually um, researched this stuff. He was like a laid out before. No, he was, he was not named round one. And then he was a late in or something weird like that, or he was a sub. And so he was someone that we were really hot on, didn't end up being able to start. I think I moved him to like Hollands, for example, who ended up being okay. But um, Phillips was was really good when he was actually playing games, but he just didn't always get them, unfortunately. Um, so he's he peaked at 410K. Uh, so yeah, he would have made 250K and been a really good rookie. Averaging in the mid seventies, it's a very nice score. Uh, but yeah, he had that weirdness, and then he didn't play week two. And then he was back week three, and you aren't sure about the job security. And um, yeah, so I like I like this pick. It's just weird what happened. Um, Marshall, this kind of needs no explanation. He is averaging one hundred and twelve, um, and we paid five hundred and six for him, and he's been durable. He's played every game. He was the clear R two behind English, so that's right. I mean, the thing that I I've missed here is like English needed to be here as well. And I'd been playing around with Darcy, who's what I ended up starting. Um, and that was, that was the miss, but yeah, Marshall, everyone had him locked in. So it's not like huge brownie points, but like, you know, like green, a lot of people had him locked in. Ashcroft didn't take a genius. Gimby didn't really take a genius. Although at this point we didn't have a ton of information on rookies, but yeah, I think some of these were quite no brainers. They're like very template for a lot of the community. And this is especially true in the forward line, like Dunkley, Torano, Rosie, Goulden, not everyone had, but um, yeah, like these four were all good starting picks, um, all, all proved to be worth it. And then two rookies here in Davey and Green. Davey definitely gets a fail. He didn't end up making as much money or uh, doing as well as I'd hoped. So what didn't even make a hundred K you can see just poor scores. He was like a bench option at best. Um, then had sub games, which I've ended up holding him through and like, just, yeah, um, not a good, not a good pick. That was a bad one. That's definitely a miss on him. Um, and then green is the last one here. And green was really good as a rookie, uh, old Fergus. He made 160 K in the first seven weeks, which is pretty good. Um, like just sixties and stuff. He just spiked these three seventies at the right time, which is nice. It's what you get with key forwards, but uh, definitely a pass mark on that as well. So if I'm going through these, like Yo um, ended up being wrong, but we all knew that ahead of time. So I'm not going to mark myself too harshly for that one. Phillips, I think was right. It's just the situation didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, and then Davey was definitely the one that this was really bad, but everything else here I'm happy with. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's good to know for next year. Like these videos actually ended up, I think being pretty good. Um, in terms of the quality of players that I left in and out of those. So thanks for reviewing. Uh, thanks for joining me for the round 23 video. Uh, looking forward to see you next week to sign off for season 2023. Um, if you have any questions, let me know below. Otherwise, if you want to retell stories of terrible league losses or whatever it is, um, share them in the comments below. I know um, I'm actually just left in two leagues now so um the content creators cup which is a whole bunch of different uh content creators here which i'm in the finals for against spills he's been in very hot form like what 2600 2460 i think he would have beaten me each of these last few weeks so um yeah spills will probably get over the top of me on this one i won this one last year uh but it's just like you know it's not not a not a real one and then this one is uh cash league i've been playing in for 
I want to say like six, seven years before I started doing overall. So I used to be a league player and this is like the main league I used to play in. So back into the grand final of this one, which is good. Um, uh, on projected, not looking like a great week uh, for me, but we'll see how we go. Um, hopefully I get the win on that one as well. I mean, I still get runner up points and scored the most points overall for the year. So there's, uh, you know, it's still a positive return on that one. But yeah, let me know how you're going and I'll see you next week. Peace.